Good morning YouTube. So I finished up four of these 20p battery modules and it's time to assemble them into a 4S battery. So I've got two of them hooked together here and I'm using some quarter inch threaded rod. It's probably a little bit too big but I had a bunch of this so I figure I might as well use it. I think these holes were sized for maybe five or six mil hardware and the quarter inch is just a little bit big so I've got to run a quarter inch bit through the holes. It's still kind of a tight fit so I use my nut driver to run the threaded rod through there. So there's a lot of friction with the uh, 3D printed plastic. Time to uh, put the next pack on here so these are my jumper wires or inner pack wires so I cut these out of the same copper wire that I use for the bus wires here same length six inches form the wire around that and solder a male bullet connector on each end and that way I can just come in here but that gives me enough room to uh, connect up both ends actually I guess it's probably easier that way yeah lay it down and then there's enough give in there that I can shove it together like that and I think that makes it a lot easier to connect because on the original design you had to take this screw out and then the screw next to it and then put your jumper wire in and then put the screws back in. So yeah, you put your four spacers on, bring this up, and then I just use my nut driver to get them threaded into the next one. So anyway, I'm going to keep going on this, get this one screwed in. And then I bring my last pack number four in, get that one hooked up, and then I'll have a uh, 4S battery here. This is about a half kilowatt hour. So these are the little BMS cards that I picked up, and I'm using one of these on my power shelf. But look at that. That hole and that hole line up. Here's your shared positive connection. Here's your charging, and then your battery negative so you have to bring the battery positive over here and then you bring the battery negative from down below over to here and then your your charging leads hook up 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 on top so i could just have the bms mounted right there i might get a little shorter standoff and something with a little bit bigger thread in there so i can screw into those holes but then i can just use a a screw here to screw in to that point for uh, securing the BMS and then I've got my balance cable here in the back I can just pick up all the balance terminals and then I'll probably shove the uh, temperature probe down come in here on the side maybe something like that okay YouTube I got the uh, 4S battery pack assembled and I hooked up a XT60 connector and 12 gauge wire coming off. You can see the uh, negative lead off that side, positive leads on the bottom. And we're charging it off the eye charger here. So I got my power shelf outside. So yeah, we're doing a 10 amp charge right now. So it's putting about 157 watts into the battery there. And if we jump over here, so yeah, we've got. 13.4 amps coming off my 12 volt battery bank at 12.33 volts and that works out to about 94 percent efficiency i checked a little earlier and it was 157 watts going into the battery pack and 166 watts coming in from the lead acid solar battery bank 26C out in the patio and it's 37C inside the charger there and so far none of the battery packs are getting hot I did the old hand test but everything seems to be taking a charge I'm doing a bottom balance here so all four groups of cells were discharged down to three volts per cell and then they've all been sitting for several days up to a week and so my pack number one was at 3.629 volts. Pack two, 
3.6. Pack 3 was at 3.5 volts, and then pack 4 was 3.617. So pack 3 looks a little bit lower on its recovery voltage. So I'm just doing a 10 amp non-balanced charge. I'm just going to take it up to full voltage and then we'll measure the individual cell voltages. I still need to make up a balance cable get that set up so I can plug in my meter but I figured I would take advantage of the sun today and get a charge in. So I'm hoping I can get it charged up as much as I can in the sun today. And then what I want to do is I'm going to use this 4S pack to power the eye charger over here. So right now I'm just finishing up. I've got my pack number 6 right there. I've got that one capacity matched. I finished that one. I've got pack number 9 to do. So I'll put that in there. And then I have the 4S pack down here. I think two of those are already within my capacity range and then the other two I have to bring down. So I'm going to use that pack to power the eye charger while I capacity match these four down here. And at the end then I'll have six more groups of cells. So, and at that point then I can build myself another one of those. Okay YouTube, we got the uh, battery pack charged up here. I did a 10 amp charge to 16 volts. And it looks like we have pretty Pretty good cell uh, voltage there, 15.92. And then we're within about 25 millivolts. And this was not a balanced charge, so this should be a full bottom balance. And it charged up pretty quick. It, I was on 10 amp charge, took five hours to do the full charge cycle. And it put a little over 30 amp hours into the pack. I guess now I've got a bottom balanced battery and then I want to try actually putting these batteries on my solar charge controller and then also see if they will power my trip light power inverter because it's supposed to handle 16 volts. So I think with two battery packs I should have enough power to try to run that guy. So That'll be some upcoming videos, so stay tuned to the channel for those. If you're not already subscribed, there's a link down here in the bottom corner to subscribe. Any questions or comments, put that in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.